After almost three years since this release, you have to wonder how we got to this place. YouTube why ravages Fierce Sky ruins every game with an 84% win rate. Session goes four months without any significant nerfs. Nearly all the new releases are overpowered. What is Pokemon Unite doing? I'm Sulu. I've been playing Unite since its release in 2021 on the Switch. I would say due to Mewtwo Y that the game is likely in the worst shape it's ever been in. In this video, we are going to cover the three major grievances with how Team e Studios is handling Pokemon Unite and shine some light into what lies ahead for us Pokemon Unite fans. So the biggest point to cover is of course the legendary situation. We actually have a video that slightly talks about this before, but a small TLDR is Zashin was released as a major legendary the first time they added this pay to win map. You go around the map, you receive Zashin for free in I think it was 18 days or you could pay up front and get Zashin right away. Zashin right away had a bug, 100% damage through any resistances on a Sacred Sword ability. It was basically one-shotting every Pokemon at the time. Absolutely broken. It's hot fix within three days. That's great. Still absolutely broken. Everyone's getting farmed. Game was very unfun. So these legendaries are extremely overpowered. They were... Took Zashin four months to get nerfed. And... That was not very good for the casual game. So these legendaries, they dramatically skew the game in the favor of one team if the other team doesn't have one to compete and then it's completely up to the player playing the legendary to really make that difference. So fast forward to now and we get two Mewtwo's, Mewtwo X and Mewtwo Y. So when Mewtwo X was released, once more, a very powerful Pokemon, it's able to pull things in, teleport near things, heal itself up, and it turns into this X form, which got extremely high crit damage and attack ratios. It's also very hard to kill. And it had a global Unite move, which essentially launched a beam at all the players and stunned them if it hit. It was like an auto-targeted stun. It did half your health bar. It was crazy. So this character goes through the game, absolutely destroying everything in its way. And we think, okay, that's pretty bad. It, it's gonna be bad. It's gonna be the best one yet. Yeah. And of course, we're treated to after the Wonderful World situation, we get Mewtwo Y. This is the ranged version of Mewtwo X. If you thought Mewtwo X was bad, Mewtwo Y is like Mewtwo X took steroids, turned into the Mega Form, dropped the ultimate and killed the entire team. This character was bonkers. We're talking about every game is about 200k damage. Every game, he just joints you away and then destroys you, there was nothing anyone could do. And funnily enough, it still is. Mewtwo Y has a bias win rate of 84%. That means that if you don't have a Mewtwo Y on your team, that even if you have Mewtwo X, even if you have Zashin, you have an 18% chance to win the game. It's actually 16. That's unreal. It's unreal. It's uncomparable. How can we get to this state? So you really have to think, how did we get here? So the developers, after the Zashin problem, they released a letter saying they don't want these characters to be so overpowered, but they still want them to be the leaders of the team. And we get the Mewtwo situation anyway, which was really unfortunate. It definitely felt like the developers didn't listen to the cause problem. Now, I get with these characters being extremely powerful and wanting to make an impact because they are legendaries and very often in other of the Pokemon games, legendaries have a huge say in how the games are formed. But this is a MOBA game. We need to be a little bit more decisive. There is a lot of other designs that we could have used. And that's another problem that Mewtwo Y had and Mewtwo X had. Zashin was a little bit more difficult to use than some Pokemon, but it wasn't so difficult. You threw some circles in the ground. The ultimate had some tricks. It was extremely overtuned from the numbers perspective. So if Zashin would auto attack you, you would lose half your health. It was a level seven character at level three. Extremely broken, as you can see. However, that was drastically different than Mewtwo X and Y's design, which was basically point and click moves, a Unite move that doesn't need to be aimed, unstoppable, healing, you can name it all. Every buff you could get, Mewtwo Y or X had it. And that's when you know the problems start to occur. This character is unkillable, it's unkiteable, you can't trade with it. You had to basically cheese them at all the points. So 
you get this, we're getting this point where these legendaries, they're just out of the control. This is also with Urshifu and Zashin taking a big limelight at the World Championship, both being played in as many games as possible, both being seen as very powerful characters by all the teams there. It's just something, a food for thought, I guess. This is a legendary situation. What is Timmy going to do about it? have no idea, but it is definitely a problem and a grievance with how they're handling the game right now. So just moving on to point two, the meta shifts and the balance changes. Look, you have to go and wonder, is there laziness, incompetence? Something is happening at Timmy Studios because they don't want to change the meta of this game. They have not wanted to change the meta of this game. They've moved everything away. They've pawned it off. Every time we get a balance update is usually small, very small touches, it's really conservative. Maybe they were planning something, maybe it was a competitive season. A lot of players believed that, oh, it was in the UCS and uh, APAC seasons of gaming. So maybe they didn't want to touch the game too much. And when it was over, when world the World Championship was finished, maybe they'll do some big changes. And we receive a patch with basically six Pokemon buffed, six Pokemon nerfed, it's it's tiny, insignificant really. Like there's the smallest of numbers being changed. So this is also some food for thought. We're just thinking, you know, why don't they want to change the game? The meta had been so stagnant. It's completely centered around these new releases, these legendary Pokemons. All of the ones in 2023 have been to some extent powerful. And the bigger Pokemon of 2023, just to name a few, something like Lapras, something like Mewtwo, something like Comfy. The, these characters have been very impactful in how the game has been played. And that's just to, to some extent, you have Inteleon, you have Umbreon. I could go on, the list goes on forever. 2023 characters have been insanely overpowered and they're taking over the game. So we need to think, you know, someone there does not want to change this game. Is it laziness, incompetence? Who knows? That's another grievance the player base has right now. It's not a very good grievance as well to have. This is not good that they don't want to change their game. They don't want to go and show an incentive for people to learn new Pokemon. They don't want to buff Pokemon people aren't using. They're looking at these stats and saying, okay, well, Charizard's never played? That's all right. Throw Charizard to the side. It's time to buff Lapras again. This is the type of attitude at least the players are feeling from Timmy Studios. And we would really like to see a change. Just touching on those issues, of course, Maybe they're worried about creating new bugs. That's also been a huge issue with this game. There's been a lot of high-end bugs. Like we're talking about terrible things. Zashin has been bugged on and off a million times. He has had a Unite Move bug only recently where he can just permanently use Unite Move and just get a shield for free. It's, it's ridiculous. But at the same time, you couldn't charge up the points which are required to use Zashin's special enhanced moves. So like that's like an even bug. Cramrat has been bugged for pretty much the whole year. They say, they say it's fixed and then it's bugged again. Nerf these strong characters, give us some of the weaker characters, bring them back into the fold, put everything in line of each other. Bounce is, you know, as the word means, something that is perfectly even on both sides. We're not getting balance of these games and these characters. We're getting extremely top loaded characters on one end and on the other end, we get characters that can't do anything. So another problem that the player base has had, and for point three, is just this meaningless rank problem. There's almost no incentive for a player to achieve a high rank at Pokemon Unite. At 1600 master points, you pretty much cap out on any sort of reward from the game, which is you basically get a little sticker. There's no really cool skin. There's no differentiate differentiation between a master player of X rank and X rank, like you could reach master rank one, but that would just mean that you grinded the game. You could play any Pokemon as well. Um, there's no like actual representation that you were actually better than another player. And there's no tiering of reward to, you know, be able to show that off. So players, they, they lose a little bit of interest with ranked. Ranked is almost essentially a normal game. There's no draft. There's no actual competitiveness in the games. Of course, people do try a bit harder than just the regular normal games. But I would say that's largely because they ruined normal games for this reason. So you have this meaningless rank problem. Matchmaking then gets issued. We have many players saying that matchmaking has not worked. The MMR system is not working. The games are bad because people are either underskilled or overwhelmed by higher skilled players in other lobbies. So like both ends of this is failing. We need to really see how Timmy actually attacks this problem. 
I once again, as I said, I would suggest something like adding draft to rent. And I think the world champions posted in the AMA that they said to Timmy Studios, yes, we, we want draft and ranked. This is a very big deal. Uh, you know, God bless them for that. And congratulations to Luminosity Gaming for winning the world championships. The way I see it is we are probably at the lowest low of Pokemon Unite. I know I said this about Zashin and a lot of people also had this take, but I, did, I, I couldn't imagine they would make Mewtwo. So I think it's only up from here. Timmy has to choose if every character has to be overpowered or in line. I feel like they're getting closer to balance by pushing out these incredibly broken designs. They're going to have to ramp up the ability of the weaker characters. Otherwise, they're just never going to be played. Either way, I do believe the game will be more enjoyable soon, hopefully with a Mewtwo nerf and, you know, bring some more characters to the meta. I am returning to doing constant YouTube content, and I've been streaming on Twitch every day this month, so I continue to do that for the, the month of November. So please come and watch the stream, interact with me here, interact with me there. I really appreciate it. I'm really looking forward to, you know, being to give, giving more to this community. And I really believe that we can make some fun and entertaining content, so I'd love every single one of you to be along with me for the ride, okay? I wish you all a wonderful day. So till the next time, this is Sulu signing out.